Our week, so John Bevnovich Harris desperate here to get a good result from slot number three on the grid. So look for the blue and red coloured car. We're only focusing on him because he was, uh, I say, he's one of the most prolific winners in this title, but also did very well last time out on the Dirt Four World Championship. So what can Veloce Iza do from slot number three on the grid? We're about to find out. Ready to race lights, gonna go out. Here we go. Lucas Mateja on the inside was very fast. Off the line, not too much wheel spin from these guys. Tidely done, four in a line, trying to find a little gap. And they're all going for the round the outside. So the is trying to come around the outside of four cars, gonna get on the gas on the exit. He's gonna get squeezed on the Armco, gets a nudge on the Armco, gets fired back into the traffic and drops down to P4. So Veloci is a drop into P4 on this first lap. Not really neat. I was surprised at the way he got the traction on the outside, Katie, but the Armco just squeezed in and we saw as we changed cameras, he got nudged back into the traffic. Yeah, it might actually be playing to his advantage there was an Arco there though, to be honest with you, because otherwise he'd have been in that wet grass on the outside, he would have got bogged down. Is he going to take the joker lap here though? It looks it's like he's to. gone in, got to, yes. taking that chance now. So I think I would have probably done the same in that situation. What definitely. he's got to hope now though, of course, is that the other drivers will take their jokers and, and, and not have him catch up with them, because passing is going to be difficult without losing too much time. So uh, out front is uh, Lucas Mateja still. So Lucas Mateja has a seven tenths of a second gap over Maxime Wagner. So holding on to that lead at seven tenths is, is decent after a lap. Remember, it's a six lap race here. Back it in, look at the rotation on the car on the way into the corner. That's also down to the tuning of the car, isn't it? These drivers have set the car up themselves. It's the first time they've done this in this, in this competition. Before, it's been a standard car, standard track, same for everyone. This time, they've had a little bit of leeway on what they want to do. They're feeling, they're following it. And so that's why you can see driving styles are slightly starting to come out and different, you know, some are really tidy in these RX2 cars. Some are throwing it in more like how you'd handle a supercar. So maybe they're putting in a bit of practice for the semi-finals later yeah, tonight. Yeah, indeed. They've got to make it that far though, haven't they? <laughs> got to take the win or get one of those fastest times if they're going to do that. And again, look, and you can see, in fact, so the steering inputs within the graphics of the car there, you could see the steering wheel was in one position. He's waiting, feeling that understeer with a little bit of oversteer on the way in as well, waiting for the car to hook up. It's beautifully done. Look how little the steering inputs are, super smooth. Exactly, super smooth. It's the weight transfer, it's the braking, it's the, it's the slight turn in. You know, these cars have got the handbrakes as well that they're playing with and the hairpins. But it's, I, I think one of the funniest things is to watch these drivers looking out the side window. That's just the rotation they're carrying in over 90 degrees sometimes into that turn one. Here we go. Looking through the side window. Here we go again, and again, look at that beautifully. The consistency here of our leader, Lucas Matesia, is absolutely outrageous. Hooking that front right wheel over that kerb, I think it's one of the hardest parts of the track to get right. And again, look how wide he is, but look at the speed he carries through the apex, KT. And his front wheels are pointing in the direction he wants to go when he's at that apex, running out wide to the exit of that corner. So he's on that power, getting the maximum he can out of that long straight up to sixth gear. What do we reckon, about 130 we thought he was doing yeah, up there earlier? Yeah at the bottom of the hill, definitely. Through the right-hander, close to the arm coat, as you dare, super close here between Blochiza, who's stuck behind Rainbow. Rainbow goes Joker now. I think somebody else has Jokered as well and hasn't shown up on our Joker marker. Tomahawks has Jokered, we're told. I saw a car go in in the standard classic RX2 livery and the Joker marker hasn't come off. So Veloce Ezer is up to P2. So it's about whether or not he can close and he can't. 2.2 2 is not going to be enough. So he's got to nail this lap and hope that the time is going to be enough to get him through as one of the runners up. Veloce Ezer trying to put in a perfect lap here while out front, Lucas Mateja. This has been an absolutely epic drive, Katie. It has. He's, he's consistent. Oh, spin! Oh. No! Veloce Ezer with a spin as he came down the hill. Ends up chucking it back into the Joker lap anyway. Ah, oh, disaster for him. So Veloce is uh, with a problem on the very last lap and isn't going to make it through from that oh. position, I think. 3.32.7 is not a bad time. We'll have to wait. We'll get confirmation for you, I'll say, before the end of the show. But the win there goes to Lucas Mateja with an absolutely perfect run. 3.28.4. And you know what he did earlier? A 3.28.2. So two... Sorry, this is a 2.2. It was a 0.4 earlier.